<laughs> hey, welcome to the Amsler. Uh, you already know what today's video is about because you already saw the intro, but I have a little introduction of myself. Of my own. <laughs> Amy! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have seen her here on the channel before. This is Amy with Twin Treats based out of Southern California, who also happens to be my cousin, came out for a visit and I decided to exploit her skills for your benefit. I, don't, I didn't know where I was gonna go with the rest of that. <laughs> but that felt good, that felt good. Today's video, we are doing a DIY dessert table with the eye of an expert dessert table baker person. What, how do you, what's your title? Um, dessert Whisperer. Dessert Whisperer. Yeah. No, I, I don't have a title. So if you want to figure out how we took less than 150 bucks, put together a dessert table to feed how 50 many? 50 to 75, I would say. 50 to, that's two to three dollars per person and it ends up looking like Bye -bye. this. Go ahead and keep on watching. <laughs> size of the dessert table does matter. Obviously, you don't want to go too large when you're only serving, you know, 50, 75 guests. Otherwise, the table's gonna look really sparse. So for this, I'm pretty sure that's a five foot table. Hello, hello. Um, step one, obviously, get a table. Step two, put a tablecloth on the table if the table's not cracked, it's like this one is. Uh, step three, you're gonna wanna push it up against the wall. According to Amy, she told me this off camera, but I'm gonna pretend like I knew it from scratch. It's easier to style it a dessert table when it is pressed up against the wall, so you're not designing it from all angles, but just from the front. Yes? Yes. Nice. Nailed it. Oh, this step four. <laughs> uh, now we are going to build up height, which gives it visual dimension and makes it a lot cooler to look at. We brought metal bins, uh, a uh, dough bowl, a couple of cake stands, another cake stand up here. I stole this actually from the venue. We basically are just looking for a variety of heights and textures that we could build because it'll make it so much more than just like a flat dessert table. And we brought florals, which I should have trimmed when I first got them because some are looking, we'll make it look good. Just trust, trust. we're gonna yes, fix it, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out if we want to here. Oh, this is the one with the pumpkin cheesecake still stuck to it. Aww. <laughs> or pumpkin whoopie pie. So we're trying to figure out if we if uh, we should use this cheesecloth or not to add a lot of texture to the tabletop. Because right now it's very one dimensional, obviously. I don't know if I've already said this in the video, but we did not buy any sort of cake stand or decor other than the flowers for this. We're just, like we just scrounged up what I had at home. And so this was cheesecloth that I have that I'm holding on to for a DIY. Eventually I want to do like a backdrop out of it. So we're just kind of messing around with what we have because basically we wanted to show you that you can make a dessert table look good with items from your own home. Sure, you may not have an antique brick mold. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who doesn't who doesn't have that? Yeah. However, you can really using this these techniques you can build a table that is visually stimulating. So right now we are trying to figure out if this works. I like it better than just the 2D flat, but I don't know if the it's like all the same color now, but it's it's a different it's a, it's enough of a contrast to be interesting. And once you put the stuff on top of it, it'll be like resting on clouds. There you go, like soft billowy clouds. There we go. Okay, so this is where we have it set for now. Now, Amy, typically, um, you usually put desserts on first and then move things around? We move things around, but um, we have a, so we have a mix of eclectic decor and display items. <laughs> <laughs> and we want some height variation in the, like more towards the back, obviously, so that you aren't hiding things. Your cake stands in front don't hide things in the back. It doesn't have to be all, the same height, but there will be variation in height, um, and then also variation even some stuff that's set farther back and some stuff that's farther forward, so it's not like a straight line across. I have weird decor. This is a, a true Jamie Wolper dessert table. <laughs> true and through. <laughs> so she's not working with the things that she usually works with, but She's obviously offering out a negative because she's not using any of her professional stuff, but it could help you guys at home because you won't have professional stuff either. So, <laughs> joke's on you. Now get back at it. Okay, so while Amy gets to setting out all the desserts, which I will show you some of her techniques for setting up, I am also going to start 
messing around with the florals because I love to do that very much. And she won't let me touch the desserts. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of. For that corner over there, that one, we have a larger floral display. I also have a select handful of bud bases as well because like Amy said, having greenery or florals on the table really helps to soften everything up. Um, and with having a medium or larger size vase, that's gonna claim a lot of real estate or visual weight over there. So uh, even DIYing a handful of florals or having your florist put something together is super smart um, to soften up the look of your table in general. Right? And give it a pop of color. And give it a pop of color, <laughs> yes. Here's one of the things with, um, especially when I put them on uh, something with height. Yeah. I don't like it to be flat because you've got height and then Yes. So you want to build up. Okay. These were from the HEB. The HEB. But Costco has brownie bites. Costco also has lemon bites. Oh yeah, those are so, so good. So it's good to have a variety, but chocolate must be a staple on all dessert tables. It's the law. <laughs> the law. <laughs> Pyramid. Actually, it looks then, real cute. Usually, because I'm extra, I take it and spin it. Of course you do. <laughs> which side looks best? One, the photographer, like which is going to be the best. I feel like I like this. Oh, I like okay. that. So. Okay, there's an actual tangible difference. That's not just crazy talk. Yeah. Good job. So some stuff um, is great for bowls. Like, that's not gonna get smushed. It doesn't have frosting. Um, meringues, obviously, are perfect for this. So, you can do, I mean, plain white bowls are obviously really easy to find. I personally am obsessed with a capital O with <laughs> footed bowls. Yes. So find a footed bowl at Home Goods or something similar, then I it's just extra cute. And the same thing for this. When you're done with the stack, which is, then just take a look from the photographer's point of view to see which meringue which has the best little to it. Best little. So now you're just going to stack everything else basically the same. The strudel's probably gonna look a little different, but the Oreo is gonna be and, and like brownies. Also, and the thing about um, that I like with the Oreo is the rim is good for stuff that's going to be slippery, like the Oreos. Mm -hmm. So these obviously aren't slippery; they don't need the rim on. Um, and I like to do Oreos on a. It's great to have the contrast of the black and white. Oh, that's too. smart. I never even so. thought about that. I never thought about the rim being effective, actually. Yeah. So that's cool. Especially if you have to move stuff, which a lot of times you do, um, it'll slide off the cake stand if you don't have. Uh, edge. So if you have dryer cookies, make sure they have a lip to the cake stand. If you have a um, extra large cake stand in the center, I like to do um, sometimes a large platter as well. That works. Um, sometimes I like to do it lower and not build up just so that you can kind of build a pipe around it on the sides and the back and it kind of gives it more variation. Baton cookies are a good option. You can pretty much find these at any grocery store under Pepperidge Farm or at your local Trader Joe's. Um, great for texture. They also come in vanilla, sometimes lemon. All right, should we do add on flowers next? Yeah. Wow, it's insane how much those flowers make such a statement. I, I love this technique because it's like 
trim it and then hide the origin of the stem behind something so it looks like the frame is growing a plant. Ta-da, Ta indeed. Okay, I kind of feel like I should do a before and after because I'm in shock by how much like the florals help. Yeah. It's a way to get color on the dessert table without adding like artificially colored desserts too. So yeah. you can stick with the classic desserts but still have a fun looking table without getting bright blue, frost bright blue frosting. Yeah, you got that yummy yum, that yummy yum, that crummy handwriting. Okay, wait, this looks so good. What the heck? Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> That's where our harmonies went. Super easy cake stand hack right here. Yeah. It's a bowl and a plate. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Most people who like have a white bowl and a white plate. And yeah. there you go, you have a cake stand. Yeah. Um, many name frames are key so that you don't have to tell people over and over what each item is. Mm -hmm. Oreos happen to be vegan. Vegan Oreos right here for anybody that needs vegan. And if you have gluten-free, if you have dairy-free, those are gluten-free. And it's important to note these because then all of your guests can enjoy everything at your dessert table as safely as possible. So that's why I love that Amy does this with all of her tables. Um, certain guests can know which ones are good for them to eat and which ones are not. And that's why the frames are right next to um, the items that they're displaying. And also another hack, votive with a plant Base? Is it plant based? It's a plant saucer from my plant house. Saucer. It's been yep. gold foiled, but it, it honestly looks so stinking good together. I like um, mini, mini moments right here. Yeah. Very good. Mini but moments. because of these mini moments, we've now break, broken up these very large circles that are all over the place that although the florals have softened them up a little bit, the mini moments create even more dimension and dynamics for you to just kind of look at, you know? And that's done by the pirouettes and then this little mini meringue moment. We keep saying mini moments. We gotta step. Mini moments. Let's say, just say mini moments from here on out. Mini moments. Um, a sign is great. Yes. Put your names, put your date, put, uh, don't touch anything until we cut the cake. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people do one. that. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can do a cheesy little phrase. Just make sure someone with better handwriting does it than I did. I, I thought I was being clever. Okay. Any last minute takeaways? Um, have fun, don't stress out, and have someone other than you set up the dessert table. Yes, please, and thank you. <laughs> yes. Temperature. Cakes generally are gonna be something that doesn't like a lot of sun. Um, everything on this table is pretty much okay in heat. It's not gonna melt or anything, but if you've got cupcakes or anything like that, then definitely you need some shade. Yep. An indoor table. Um, yeah, so that's something to ask and make sure with your venue before you set the table. And if it's outside for too long, obviously most of the frostings will melt. Yes. And bugs are a factor as well. Yeah. So you want to add an extra protein with bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Just Some people eat bugs. It makes them more keto. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've also done a whole dessert table video with Amy already on this channel that contains all of the tips and tricks to having a successful dessert table. Our shirt's creeping up again. <laughs> I wore the wrong shirt to vlog it. So if you were looking to dive more in depth about temperatures, about types of food, about how many you should be having, be sure to check out that video. This is just a practical application of all the tips that we gave in that video for you to see physically what it looked like. Cause I know we get a lot of that in the comment section of that one. Like I wish you had showed us how to do a, a, a table. And this is very budget friendly. Very, and we'll serve 
50 to 75, I would say. 50 to 70, mm -hmm. 50 to 75 people. It's like max three bucks a person. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, love you. No, I'm going for this one. Oh, I thought you were like giving me a microphone moment. I'm confused. I'm not a professional at this. <laughs> this is not my jam. <laughs> Thanks, You're love. I'm <laughs> Mike? Thanks, love Bye. you. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, what if I get started on... Get started. Get, get started. Let's get, get started. 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 Yeah. Why, yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I don't know what it's like to be related to Jamie. 